Today we're going to be unboxing a very exciting product from EVGA. This is the GeForce GTX 460, so that is 20 less than the GTX 480, 10 less than the GTX 470, and only 5 less than the GTX 465. But the performance of the 460 is actually very, very close to its big brother, the 465, and it's quite a lot cheaper. Now it does have less RAM, so that means at high resolutions you might be a little bit limited in terms of running like huge anti-aliasing on high resolutions, but with the price of this card you're probably not going to be running at 2560 by 1600 with a 30 inch monitor anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and start breaking the seals here. So the GTX 465 or 460 is a bit of a change from the other Fermi based cards in that Nvidia has actually reworked the architecture of this card quite a bit. That means that power consumption is down down, heat output is down, and performance is up versus some of the other 400 series cards. It also means that the price is down. So this is around $200 US, and that puts it securely in a sort of uh, value enthusiast gamer price point if such a thing existed. So here's a little quick start guide. Next we have a graphics card user guide. Okay, so that shows us some Super Basics talks about EVGA's Advanced RMA program, talks a little bit about their uh, Precision software, which is for overclocking. That's a pretty good value add, as well as EVGA's social networks. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and put that down. We've got an EVGA sticker, as well as an EVGA driver disk. Don't use this driver disk. Download the latest off the NVIDIA website. Ooh, that's a nice sticker. EVGA GeForce GTX 400 GPUs. So I could put it there if I wanted to, but I don't. Next, let's go and have a look at the card itself. So I haven't seen an EVGA box like this before. It looks like they've redesigned things a little bit. In terms of accessories, we've got a mini HDMI to HDMI dongle. We have a dual Molex to one PCIe 6 pin dongle. Then we have two Molex to one PCIe 6 Okay, so we have two of those. Then we have a DVI to VGA adapter. And that's it. Then we have the card itself. It's quite a bit smaller than the G other GTX 400 series cards because all of the other cards, despite having different model names, are based on the same core and most of them are even based on the same PCB, even if the coolers are slightly different. This one, however, is based on a much smaller PCB, so it ends up being a much smaller card and it's also a, a smaller core. So you can see where the uh, where the GPU core actually is on the back of the GPU, uh, back of the video card. See, GPU and video card, I use these terms interchangeably, but the GPU is actually the graphics processing unit there, and the video card is the whole thing with a PCB, which in this case is black, a GPU on it, RAM on it, all that good stuff. So at the top, we're going to find an SLI connector. It is SLI ready, but it does not support three-way SLI because for three-way SLI, you would need two SLI connectors. We have an 80 millimeter fan on the front, and you can see that it's using a flower style heatsink that is actually, uh, here, cameraman, just look at that card for a second. I'll be back. It actually closely resembles the stock Intel heatsink, where you've got a copper core at the back, and in this case we can see there is a copper base with a couple of heat pipes attached to it, and then it's got like this uh, radial fin thing going on, and I've actually seen Intel heatsinks that are shaped exactly like that, so it looks like, uh, you know, it's a bit of a tribute to Intel's thermal engineers that, yes, that design does work. We've got two heat pipes coming out here and uh, presumably coming over here where there's more heatsink and over here and presumably coming out over there so you can actually see yes there is uh, additional heatsink material past that little uh, flower shape and that's uh, having heat transported to it by the heat pipe so here we've got uh, PCI Express 16x connector and at the back of the card it still does pull back a fair bit of power but that's what you generally expect from a $200 plus gaming card. So you need two six pin PCI Express connectors. And let's have a look at what we've got in terms of... Cameraman, what are you doing? Oh, you're looking down the shroud. Okay, well I haven't looked there yet, so I don't know what's there. But I guess, here, I'll look through the camera too. Oh, we can see the heat sink. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna look. Oh yeah, 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 you can see where the heat pipe attaches to that heat sink in there. Cool. All right, so let's turn around and see what we've got in terms of output 
connectors. So we have two DVI and one HDMI connector. Now this card does support NVIDIA surround as well as 3D vision technology. So bearing in mind though that you would need two cards to run surround gaming. So you can only use two of these three connectors at any given time. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the EVGA GeForce GTX 460 768 meg version. Bearing in mind there is a one gig version that will perform slightly better due to extra memory as well as extra memory bandwidth. The cameraman pointed out to me this is actually a bumper sticker. So you would apply it to your bumper like so.